Because the daily pressure of life weighs heavy on our minds, on our bodies, and on our spirits, we need, we need a time to set it rest. Because the stresses of our culture often leave us feeling burdened and looking for hope, we need a time of Sabbath rest. Because rest, fun, leisure, and naps help us cope and feel refreshed, we need a time of Sabbath rest. Because we think more clearly, love more freely, and share more joyfully when we are well rested, we need a time of Sabbath rest. Giver of life, Help us recognize when we need to stop and care for ourselves. Allow us to enjoy a Sabbath as often as we need one. Allow us to rest without guilt so that we may work with more joy. We are thankful for the gift, gift of Sabbath, Sabbath rest. rest. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we make no pretense about our lives. We forget, even deny, that we were created with wonder and delight in our souls. Yet we go through life anxious, serious, seeking to, go, to get ahead, striving to make ends meet. We rush and hurry and fill up our calendars. Where is the joy? Where are the days of rest? Where is the sense of delight? Forgive us, Lord, for failing to be the people that you created us to be. Love for who we are, just as we are. We lift our prayer in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading this morning comes from the fifth chapter of Deuteronomy, beginning at verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, 
as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, or your male or female slave, or your ox or your donkey, or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter. This is Jesus responding to the scribes and the Pharisees that were uh, setting rules and holding uh, the people accountable for how they understood Sabbath. And Jesus responds, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. My dad was not a good role model for Sabbath. In the simplest definition, it is a time of rest and divine work. I don't ever remember my father enjoying rest, not even on vacation. He did plenty of divine work. My dad was a teacher, and almost always bringing work home. I remember being in about third grade when I was helping him grade his fifth grade class homework. I would often be asked to do that, while he ran off as being a, an alderman on the school board and later the county board. He coached my little league team and his, uh, his school's girls basketball team and did lots of continuing education. I believe he had at least two masters, maybe, maybe three. And then there was church. That is the place of Sabbath, right? But he served on the council, often as council president, lector and usher, Sunday school teacher, assisting minister, communion assistant. <sighs> no Sabbath rest at church as well. His busyness was one of the tensions in my parents' marriage. For my mom wasn't second place, she was fourth or fifth, maybe sixth. How do you keep Sabbath? I work on Sundays. So I make sure I take personal time for God at other times during the week. It was Lyle Greiner, former uh, youth leader here, youth minister here at St. Luke's. He's one of my mentors, and he helped me immensely. He said, Rob, you're going to burn yourself out working your full week and then your retreats and other youth events and then all day on Sunday you need to learn the block schedule. If you don't learn anything else today, hold on to this if you do not know what the block schedule is. If you look at a 40-hour work week, you have 10 blocks of four-hour time. You work from 8 a.m. to noon, you take that hour lunch, not at your desk, but away for rest, and then from one to five, you finish off your work for the day, and then you go home, no matter what's still in your inbox. It's a great plan, rarely can we follow it, but we need to keep it in mind. So I block out my schedule uh, for my wife and I share it with her so we know when we have time together. Deuteronomy commentary by Patrick Miller on the third commandment, keeping the Sabbath, 
First of all, some of you might go, no, that's the fourth commandment. In church, we can't even agree on how many commandments there are and what order to put them in. But that's a whole other story. The Deuteronomy commandment has, a, has differences in wording and explanation than the Exodus version. In terms of the logic, it is not remember to keep, but the reverse. Keep the Sabbath. And by so doing, two purposes will be accomplished. You will remember the redemptive work of God on your behalf, and you will provide and you will provide rest for the slaves under your control. Now, slaves is an older term, but it just means your co-workers, those who you give direction to, um, those of which you work with. So in the case of the Exodus, the community is called to remember and to obey out of that memory. The Deuteronomy, the community obeys to keep alive the memory of the redemptions and to bring about the provision of rest from toil for all members of the community. The believing community is to do on the Sabbath three things. Set aside their normal routines and work activities to gain rest and refreshment, further to see that such rest is available to all, including those who might not normally have the freedom to relax from work. Number two, in some manner, the day should be set aside to God for worship or divine service. Both are aspects of the day of rest. And number three, the community is to recall the redeeming work of God, that we live out the Great Commission and sharing what God has done in our lives with others. And this contradicts the, natural, the, the nature of our contemporary society, which is 24-7, 365. We admire and lift up all those people that work so often. But that is not a reward. Sunday, a day of rest, worship, and observance, remembering God's redemptive act. For Christians, it is all about the resurrection of Jesus. As theologian Martin Luther said, every Sunday is a little Easter. We remember Jesus' divine act of acceptance, forgiveness, and love. Miller continues, what Sabbath means in a larger theological implications is that Sabbath is a gift from God. It is given to bless human existence. Jesus confirmed it when he declared the Sabbath was made for human beings. Karl Barth claims on this day we are to celebrate, rejoice, and be free to the glory of God. Therefore, while it is something to be done by us for our good and thus comes to us as a command, it is also something to be received for our enjoyment and for our benefit, and thus comes to us as a gift, never out of obligation. Example, receiving a guitar is a gift. Learning how to play it, that takes work. But in doing so, many people live to play their guitar. As gift, the primary character of Sabbath is rest. It places in the cycle of life a provision for freedom from the tyranny of oppression, of unrelenting human labors, drive, and increasing pressure on unceasing work. The Sabbath commandment does not command work for six days. It assumes that human existence requires this hard labor. Remember, in the beginning, Adam and Eve are in the garden but due to their sinfulness, hard toil became a necessary evil for them to recognize the blessings that God has given us. As rest, Sabbath looks back to the Exodus redemption. It was given in response to the Egyptian king who, when asked if the people could have a three-day rest to worship the Lord, he rejected it with insistence on the exploitation of the human life for work. If Exodus was God's redemptive activity to give Sabbath to even slaves, then Sabbath now is human non-activity to, to remember that Exodus redemption. In effect, the command says, in breaking free from your labors, you will be reminded of God's breaking you free from your hard toil and your bondage. As rest, the Sabbath also looks forward to the promised rest of God. For Christians, we shift the day of celebration to the first day of the week. Isn't that unique? Rest first, we say, that our toil may be done as a blessing to God's gift of this rest 
that we are given on Sabbath. Jesus' resurrection is the assurance that because he lives, we also live. And Sabbath work is to create shalom, peace, and wholeness. Heschel shares a rabbinical legend in his book named Sabbath. At the time when God was giving the Torah to Israel, God said to the people, My children, if you accept the Torah and observe my commandments, I will give you for all eternity a thing more precious than I have in my possession. The people asked, And what is the most precious thing that you will give us if we obey the Torah? And God responded, The world to come. People asked, Show us this world. Give us an example of the world to come. And then God gave the people the Sabbath. The Sabbath serves to guard the first commandment. You shall not create false idols. And work in this society has become one of those idols. One of the greatest idols is that we think we are somebody with what we do. Gaining our value and our meaning from it. The Sabbath relativizes human work and pulls people away from their own limited goals and endeavors to remember the larger, greater, everlasting gifts from God. It reminds the community that labors, intelligence, strength, and accomplishments are not to be the end-all and be-all of existence. It does not invalidate or forbid work, but does keep us from putting our trust solely into work. Setting apart one day regularly to the Lord inhibits the human inclination to justify oneself by our job or our work. That is why I like to introduce myself as Rob, pastor at St. Luke's. For God knows us by name, not by our occupation. We are created as a child of God, not a tool to be used by society. I find my worth in being God's child who uses the gifts and the ability, and I use the gifts and the abilities to give, to glorify God. Too many people don't even acknowledge God's gifts and abilities that have been given to them, but instead use them to make a life of their own glory, of their own importance. The Sabbath is a concrete symbol that God's saving grace is what redeems human life rather than work. The Sabbath is a time to stop striving and reaching, to stop justifying oneself before everybody else. It is a time to remember having been set free and accepted in the ultimate sense and to know that the chief end of life is not found in human work or accomplishment, but only in glorifying and enjoying God. The Sabbath is one of the marks of the people of God. More than anything except for the first commandment, the Sabbath was the reality that identified and distinguished Israel from other nations. Sabbath is a sign that includes rest at its center. There really is a difference between experiencing a day off and and experiencing a day to glorify the Lord. Existence is difficult to endure without Sabbath. At its core, it is a time of rest and celebration and community. That's found right here in worship. Rest in the word and in the prayers. Celebration in singing and in giving. Community in sharing our lives with one another and and offering God's peace to all people as we depart. A great example is a person who says that they get nothing out of church. They come out of obligation most often. They are concerned about what they are missing in the outside world. Are some of you guilty of that right now, having your little list that you've been making in your heads? What am I going to do after this? Versus what is offered right here and now. They say no one cares about them. But they've never created a time to be known or to participate in the fellowship or shared service with other church members, which then isn't work It's glorifying God and the gift of relationship in doing so. Gifts of the Sabbath are for all. Those who have been slaves and have been freed by the power and the grace of God can never treat slaves in the same way that they were treated. Once the exodus was complete, slavery was on its way out. It was even further on its way out when the Lord set the Sabbath in the midst of the community. You get to choose how you treat other human beings in the same caring way you would like to be treated as articulated in the great commandment. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's exemplified in providing Sabbath rest for all members of the community. 
And that is what Jesus is doing in our gospel reading. Eugene Boring, in his Matthew commentary, states that Matthew had in mind particularly the burden of religious obligation imposed by the scribes and the Pharisees, which became a barrier to communion with God. This is directed to all those who are put off by the pretensions of human religion and all of its unwritten rules for how we are to behave or even how we are to dress. Old Testament tradition, yoke, was a common metaphor for servitude and hence obedience. In contrast, in the rabbinic custom of speaking of the yoke of the Torah and the yoke of the kingdom, Jesus speaks of my yoke, thereby claiming to be the expression of God's will, like rest for the like rest. The easy yoke of Jesus is not an invitation to a life of ease, but of deliverance from the artificial burdens of human religion, which Matthew sees as a barrier to the true fellowship of the kingdom of God. Learning is an important aspect of Matthew's understanding of discipleship. Jesus offers rest, a symbol of salvation associated with the kingdom of God and eternal life. His invitation is to those who know themselves to be burdened and in need of salvation, an invitation to learn and become Jesus' disciples. Those who hear the invitation will know that they have the responsibility to answer the call, and when they do, they will understand that they want to praise God, who has given them this gift of revelation and redemption. Sadly, many who accept this invitation fail to share it with others, often placing burdens on others and how they participate in worship that we have to do things the right way. But that means you're spelling right, R-I-T-E, instead of it, R-I-G-H-T, a way that lifts you up and helps you be who God made you to be. I love that we welcome children here at St. Luke's versus how we want children to behave in worship. We want them to belong first. They are first a child of God. And we welcome them just as they are. Remember, the key to the Sabbath is divine work. And Jesus, later in Matthew, calls a child to him. And he put the child in the midst of all the disciples who were arguing about how you're supposed to act around the rabbi. And Jesus says... Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Children live in this wonder and amazement, fun and joy, and that is what Sabbath should be. Keeping the main thing the main thing, finding rest and doing divine work to glorify God, and then in turn offering it to others that they might know the acceptance, forgiveness, and love of God. Let us keep commandment. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Divine, not restrictive. And in it, you will find rest. Amen.
please join confessing our faith with the word of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthened by the Spirit, who gives us words to speak and hearts that care, let us bring our hopes and needs to God. O God, strengthen and empower your church. Where it is weak or timid, raise up leaders. Support it with your gift of inner strength and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Creator God, the earth groans when we do not regard it with our loving care. Forgive us for polluting the water and the air, for stripping the land of its natural resources, and for caring more about our own comfort than, lo than the long-term health of the planet. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. How beautiful it is when people dwell together in unity. Help us appreciate the differences among us, to seek to understand one another, and to work together in, for harmony. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O oh God. Holy source of hope, so many people are in pain today. Give us hearts of compassion, hands that heal, and lips that speak words of comfort and encouragement. Surround with all your love, uh, with all your love, all those in need. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O oh God. As you walked with Abraham and Sarah, the Magi, and all who follow your call, be with those who travel this day, pilots, truckers, cab drivers, and train engineers, those on vacation and those on the, ro on the road for work. Let us pray. Have Lord mercy, Lord. God. Alpha and Omega, you are with us from our, la from our first breath to our last. We give thanks for, th for the faithful departed who now rest in your loving arms. May the promise of resurrection sustain those who trust in you. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O oh God. We lift, uh, we lift our prayers up to you, God of mercy, confident that all things in, are in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. For those who are gathered, let us take a moment to welcome everyone with a wave of peace. For those of you online, please share a word of peace in the comment or chat. Most of all, as we go out into the world, may we greet others as people of peace. In this time of reflection and response, you are invited to fill out your welcome card, sharing your reflections, questions, or prayers on the back. Also take this time to prepare your offering. For those who are gathered, collection plates are at the front and the back, um, and there is a QR code in the bulletin to give electronically. For those of you online, please go to, please go to our website, stlucebloomington.org, and there is a link there at the bottom of every page. Enjoy this time.
May we release the control of all we carry tightly and find rest, trusting that God can work all things for good in his name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. invite you to stay for the uh, postlude as the flute trio continues to play their beautiful music for us and thank you again for serving us today. So with that, go in peace, Christ is with you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.